This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by HostGator. Coming up on Destructoid, Dead or Alive 5 shows off its uh, <laughs> physics, Baldur's Gate is back, sort of, kind of, and Skyrim Watch! All that and more right now on Destructoid Live! Hey there, welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Do you know what day it is, Max? Just a regular old no, Friday. No, it's Destructoid's sixth birthday! Oh my god! Yeah. <gasps> Confetti! Thanks, God! Get down from there! Uh, we've got some champagne. Yes, we do. Some champagne here. So let's pop a to bottle, celebrate. whatever. Don't Dude, say we never do anything god, special you get some for too. you. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, god. So, uh, oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, god, oh there's geez. lights everywhere. Okay. Uh, let's uh, see. Oh, oh, there, whoa. 10 points for Griffin. Oh, that was quick. All right, yeah, so, um. All right, you know, six, wow. Six yeah. years ago, uh, Yanir Gonzalez, Nero, as he's known to Detoid, um, he found a Destructoid as a little WordPress blog that he, uh, he wanted to use to get press credentials to get into E3 as a lifelong dream. And uh, here we are six years later, and somehow that is still a thing. Here's, here you go, Stu. Come, this is Stu. Come out here. Say hello, Stu. He throws confetti. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay, so they don't want you to see Stu. He he looks homeless. That's to be fine. fair. That's fine. It's not um, important anyway. But yeah, I'm just so kidding, this Stu. Is, I love you. This has been a, it's been a crazy ride, I guess. I've only been here for a little bit of it, but um. It yeah. has been crazy. We've been doing this thing for a year and a half now. Yeah. Which is like it's nothing nuts. compared to Destructoid. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Um, yeah. To celebrate, there's Stu's arm. Um, to celebrate, we're actually having a, a fundraiser to send Destructoid people to Costa Rica to build houses for Habitat for Humanity, which is kind of a cool thing to do. Um, I realized we, we said some weird things about charity last episode, and I don't... Sometimes we're dumb, man, but there's no such thing as bad charity. That's a thing. That's over on Destructoid.com. Just go go do that. Go donate. I think we're actually physically sending um, Destructoid people to yeah. to Costa Rica to physically build the houses. I've always this wanted to do that, actually. Yeah. That's kind of a dream. I probably won't be the one going yeah. just because, you know, this job. But um, I'm allergic not only... to everything Yeah, or I'm allergic to heat. I guess. Um, no, I'm from Texas. That's not true. Uh, but actually, not only is it Destructoid's sixth birthday, it's also the co the founder Nero's, yeah, birthday, Nero's birthday as well. He's, he's 34. Yep. Old yep. man. He's 21 years old in his I heart. Know. He's forever 21, like the store, like me. where they sell the, the girls' clothes. Um, yep. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Cheers, so, to everyone. So yeah, cheers to Destructoid. Changed my life in a very real way. <laughs> One quick tidbit before we get into the meat of the show. I know there's been some speculation lately on whether or not we'd see a new Xbox at this year's E3. And as it turns out, we've got now 100% legitimate official confirmation that no, we will not be seeing any new hardware. Damn this, it. This, this E3, I was gonna say this Xbox. Uh, Microsoft's overlord, Major Nelson, tweeted yesterday, FYI, we don't plan on discussing new hashtag Xbox hardware at hashtag E3 this year. His tweet also included a link to a Bloomberg article in which sources close to Microsoft reveal that they might be showing a successor at E3 2013 and releasing it the same year. We can't talk about that yet. Uh, but definitely not this year. It's not exciting at all. So, nope, there you have it. No new Xbox this year. That was not as exciting as I'd hoped. But. Hey, you want to talk about exciting? I got some exciting news for you. Real exciting that will just blow your mind. Um, you guys remember that mysterious teaser image that was on baldersgate.com that we reported on a little while back that was just like, you know, a thing. Then they're teasing something and there's supposedly going to be a big announcement. Well, yesterday, it it got really exciting when they put up a countdown that counted down to an error 500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Baldur's Gate servers couldn't handle our anticipation. However, we eventually learned that the big announcement is that Atari, Wizards of the Coast, and Overhaul Games have gotten a team together to bring out enhanced versions of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. The games are being made in a, and I quote, reforged version of the Infinity Engine and will include new content, but are being overseen by members of the original Baldur's Gate team. Uh, the first game is set for release sometime this summer with no date yet for a sequel. Uh, I'm sure this is exciting for fans of Baldur's Gate. Please don't get mad at me. I'm scared of all of you right now. But but frankly, I think this is a blatant misuse of a teaser site and a countdown timer. You don't build up this much of a hype for like a half-assed announcement like this. Like, there are no screenshots. There's no trailer. There's just these vague details that I just told you right there. It's... 
Okay, you know what got people really excited, like more than this news, without even resorting to a countdown timer? Diablo 3 has a release Woo! date. It is a thing that is happening on May 15th. That is the date. Yep. Mark that, your calendars. Uh, same date as yeah. Max Payne 3. Oh, God, we're going to have a busy it's week. It's going to be a busy week, that show. I like, this is the weird kind of alternate reality we live in where everyone else is like, yeah, calling in sick that week for work, clearing my schedule. Mm -hmm. I got some shit to do. We're like, Fuck, we have to work a lot that week. <laughs> we gotta play a game about a man in Hawaiian shirts, and we gotta go Damn crawl around in, in dungeons. It's weird. I hardly count that work, but I am excited about Diablo 3. I go home and I file papers. Really? I play Just with a copier. I go down yeah. to Kinko's and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have a normal yeah, job. I like I'm a normal those person. Yeah. But anyway, that's uh, that's a thing. Diablo 3 is gonna that's be That's very exciting news. Uh, still sad about no PvP, but so it goes. Mm. Now, we usually only talk about collector's edition stories, you know, on slow news days, but. When it comes to Steel Battalion heavy armor, I am more than willing to make an exception. What are you doing? I'm getting out my Steel Battalion. Uh, Capcom has announced a limited edition bundle for the game that will include a soundtrack and art book, as well as a military jacket, a helmet cap, and an army bag. The bundle is currently listed for 35,000 yen exclusively on Cap Capcom's Japanese e-store. Uh, which translates to around 400 US dollars. And if you think that sounds over the top, remember that the original Xbox game required yeah. a $150 controller. Not optional, required it with this is two control it, by the way. sticks, three pedals, and almost 50 buttons. Yeah. And yeah, and made, that's uh, it. That was, they made these two games for this, this controller. Yeah, a little yeah. bit ridiculous. Um, but thankfully, the new game ditches all that and totally just relies solely on Kinect in conjunction with your normal Xbox controller, which I think is a huge improvement, it's both really functionally cool. and financially. And, uh, well, I guess if you already own a Kinect, if not, then it sucks. But um, for fans willing to drop a few hundred racks, there's always the collector's edition out there. Um, Hans and I actually checked out the game at Xbox's big spring showcase last week or a couple weeks ago. We made a video about it. It's, uh, it's up on this channel. YouTube.com slash Detroit. so cool. We both really liked it. Um, in fact, almost everybody I talked to at that showcase said that it was the best game they saw there. Carboni was like, why did they show me this? And then Star Wars Connect. Like, what? That's not the order you show people and things so in. Um, dumb. But yeah, like, everybody thought it was really awesome, and I... I I like the game. I, I won't be dropping, you know, 400 bucks on the collector's edition anytime I, soon. Uh, but if Capcom wanted to send us one, yeah, I mean, then I, we certainly I object. I am very fond of dressing dumb to I play games. I hear you are quite the cosplayer. I like to wear. There is me there playing is uh, Astro Space Commander, or this basically that's the game you play when you have Steel Battalion, but you don't have an Xbox to hook it up to, so you have to put mm -hmm. on a Frontierville hat and use your imagination. Wham! <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that outfit would have looked a lot less rad without that controller. I have to say, the would, Kinect look, just doesn't have I'd the same appeal weird. to it. Yeah, I don't know, but it, I, I love that. It's like here, it's a game. <laughs> it's a game. This time you don't need to buy this crazy thing, and then they're just like, but but you could, you yeah. could give us all that money. You hey, know you got all that money. There are certain people out there who are really uh, the collector's edition stuff. Oh yeah, stuff. no, it's it's very much targeted. Would you guys the, buy something like this yeah. at all? Can you read Japanese? I don't know if you can buy it if you can't read Japanese. Personally, I'm saving my money. For for the $500, like, 142nd scale okay. Metal Gear Rex action figure that they've shown off. It's ridiculous. I'm going to sext with our uh, chat. Do Excuse it. Me. Um, so we're going to do a trailer for Lollipop Chainsaw today that gives us uh, kind of a better sense of the bosses we're going to see in the game. The first boss, who is uh, Zed the Punk Rock Zombie, I got to fight him when I played at a PAX last year, and I was sort of afraid that all the bosses in the game were going to have the same Hot Topic t-shirt from 2006 kind of attitude, but this trailer sets my fears to rest. So we get, uh, in addition to Zed, we've got... Uh, um, VK, who's the, the zombie Viking metal guy, and then there's uh, Josie, the funky zombie, and then of course there's uh, Mariska, who's a psychedelic hippie zombie chick. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of the uh, the Josie zombie funky disco level thing, and there were uh, there were disco balls. Uh, it was sort of weird. I remember, I think Hamza walked up right behind me, was like, "The fuck is up with this boss fight?" Just. I don't know. It's a weird game. Um, but I do love it when, when things have different themes. Like, I love when it's not just like, oh, yeah, they're all punk rock zombies. It's like, no, they're different kinds of rock zombies. That's cool. Um, yeah, if they were all, like, goth punk, that would be... That would be dumb. That'd be very stupid. But I think we're I think we're in for more of a unique experience than we realize with this game. I'm excited about mm -hmm. it. I know a lot of people are. And I'm excited. Yeah. A lot Not of crazy long. outfits. Speaking of crazy outfits, Tara, give us an update on them boobs. Right. Yeah. So while we're showing off new trailers here, you talk to the chat. Mm -hmm. We got a new one for Dead or Alive 5. You know that 
game about boobs from Team Ninja. I think it's also got some fighting element. Whoa. Wow, those are boobs. All right, so let's take a look at this trailer. It shows two of the female characters in the game, Ayane and Hitomi, facing off in the construction stage, which we've actually seen in some previous trailers, uh, though it was labeled then as pre-alpha. Now you can see it's a little bit more polished. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of fighting games, but the whole interactive environment aspect makes this one a lot more interesting to me. And you know, also boobs. Yeah, they're fun games, and you can also jerk off to them. So there's that, yeah. I guess. Two for the price of I one. I love that they've just given up on character design with her. They're like, yeah, um, she's got um, fingerless gloves. And yeah. otherwise, she just looks like a normal ass person. Just. What I find funny is that people like revere this game for having revolutionary and realistic jiggle physics, when in reality, it's not realistic at all. Like, look, her boobs are moving independently from her that body. That is exactly how a bag of sand that moves. That is not how it works. I'm sorry. I grew my boobs myself, okay? I know how they work. No, they have like tire swing physics. They kind of oh. just like, they sort of twist and go back and forth. Oh. And... It's like those wave machines, you know? Yeah. It's strange. Um, but apart from that, the game looks pretty good. Uh, we still don't have a release date locked down yet, but word on the street is sometime this September. Mm. So if you simply cannot wait until then, uh, Tecmo Koei is actually bundling a demo of Dead or Alive 5 with next week's release of Ninja Gaiden 3, which you were gonna be reviewing. Yeah, so, apparently, yeah. Check that out. Gotta, gotta, gotta play a friggin' ninja game, whatever. But yeah. no, that's gonna be cool. I'm gonna be calling it, uh, I'm gonna be calling it Ninja Garden 3, because I think that's funny. Yeah, it was funnier the first time you Oh, yeah, but game. I also said that I wanna, I wanna just, I wanna make like a man cave in my house and call it my Ninja Gaiden, you know? I think that's clever. Come on, call it your Ninja Gaiden. Well, Welcome to my Ninja Gaiden. If you're gonna go there, why not just call it Gaiden? I guess that works, too. Because, I mean, what is a guy den but a gay den? I don't know. I'm going to take a second to thank our sponsor before I offend any more people. Okay, good call. HostGator can get your blog or website up and running in just minutes. With plans starting at only $3.96 a month, you can get 24-7 support and access to website building tools with over 4,000 templates. They will even migrate your current site for free. HostGator servers are 130% powered by wind energy, not to mention they offer unlimited disk space and bandwidth, a 45-day money-back guarantee, and a $100 Google AdWords credit to market your site. Revision 3 viewers are getting an even better deal. HostGator is offering you 25% off your order or your first month free. Just go to www.hostgator.com and enter the code DESTRUCTOID at checkout. All right, and we are back. Oh, dear, I am getting another important transmission. I'm told that we have another Skyrim watch from Sir Max Scoville. Let's check in. Thank you, Tara. That's right, Max Scoville here, coming to you live from the deck of the Normandy. And I've got another Elder Scrolls update for Skyrim Watch. Now, obviously, we thought this stupid played out segment was done when the game came out, but we were wrong. Bethesda has just released the Skyrim Beta Update 1.5 on Steam, which fixes a number of game-breaking bugs. That's always nice, but more importantly, kill cams. Now you can kill motherfuckers with magic and ranged attacks, and it looks really cool. And there are also now kill animations for melee attacks, too. And when people get tired of killing people, you can you can marry Lydia. That's, that's great. We like that. Anyway, this update is now live on Steam, and it's coming soon to 360 and PS3. But wait, there's more. PC site Tom's Guide has unearthed a rumor that Bethesda is hard at work on an Elder Scrolls MMORPG, and that a formal announcement should be expected in May. Now, according to an anonymous source, the new game will take place hundreds of years before any previous game in the franchise, and it'll allow players to join one of three factions, which are represented by a lion, a dragon, and some kind of bird of prey. Fans have been clamoring for an Elder Scrolls MMO for ages, so this shouldn't come as any surprise. As for the validity of the rumor, my friend Devin, who, who's the guy who wrote the article on Tom's Guide, said it was true, and I like Devin, so it's probably true. Journalism! Tara, back to you. Thank you, Tara. Wonderful. I actually like Devin, too. Devin Connors, right? Yes. Yeah, awesome like guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. Good journalism, Also Max. into the Boba Fetts. But you yeah. get a sticker. I get a sticker. Do you want a... For journalism. Um, a Sharpay or a Basset Hound or a basket full Yo, of you Dalmatians? You got any Dalmatians up in that bitch? Okay, you get the basket of Dalmatians. Basket of puppies. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So, moving on. Gearbox is putting out... They're actually a breed. What? They're actually a vicious breed. I, they, they are. I used to own a, yeah. a, a Dalmatian puppy, actually. They're horrible. Fuck we we Fuck ended up giving it away because we couldn't take care of it. Anyway, moving on. Video games. Gearbox has been putting out some really interesting marketing campaigns for Borderlands 2 since they announced it last year, and their latest love letter to fans is just that. 
a love letter to fans called Hello My Future Borderlands 2 PC Player as written by Claptrap. This is what I sound like. This is obviously intended for PC gamers or anyone who played the original Borderlands on PC and felt shafted by its lack of features, especially its shitty multiplayer matching. Well, needless to say, they are a tough but important crowd to please, so Gearbox is stepping up their PC gaming department, and I can't say that I blame them. Scattered in between sweet nothings and semi-pornographic sketches of cartoon robots are promises of improved native multiplayer matchmaking, completely mouse-enabled menus, fully remappable key bindings, a PC-specific UI, and an FOV slider, as well as a whole bunch of other features, including cloud saves, achievements, integrated VSync, and much, much more. Not a terrible list. Um, if you guys wanted to read the whole thing, or you can just scroll to the bottom for the actual list part, you can do that at borderlands2.com slash loveletter. Very cute. I love Claptrap. I love that they're making him, like, the main like marketing face yeah. of Borderlands 2. He's the mascot. They yeah. realize that people love him. And yeah. also, not to uh, humble brag or anything, but I get to play Borderlands 2 <sighs> next week. This is my first time playing it. So Whatever, really I excited. get to play Darksiders 2, I guess. Oh, you're going to that. I'm gonna go play Darksiders 2. Awesome. Um, anyway, um, we got a couple questions. Uh, let's see, Mama Dakara says, Tara, what's your most memorable moment on the Destructoid show? Oh, there's so many. Um, you know what? Probably one of my most memorable ones was the very first live show that we ever did. We got so drunk on Four Locos. I or was not drunk the, the on Four Loco. Yeah, the one oh, we did over I, there yeah, from I the had, Black Curtain. I had Old English in a brown bag. That's the time we were drinking. Got. I wasn't drunk. I was just we were scared. super we were nervous. We were so scared. I, my hand was shaking. We like do this every week now. I know. That's fucking crazy. It's not a big deal now, but yeah. back then. We're was... so good at our jobs. Yeah. But no, it, it, seriously, it's, it's, fun. it's fun. We have a blast doing it. It's cool that you guys can chat with us. Um, yeah. That Any first time, though, we were seriously like, yeah, just, just like adrenaline I rush. I was sweating um, in some areas. Yeah, we got some, uh, ew. Yeah. Um, let's see, yeah, Max, you want a million dollars to invest in a restaurant. What do you call it? This is Jack Only by the Night. I call it Inbox, and everything on the menu has spam in it. Mmm, that's yeah. good. That would go over well, well in San done. Francisco. There's well a lot done, of fucking sir. nerds. Uh, let's see. I, I read somebody on there earlier who was saying that Stu is now their favorite crew member of Destructoid. Stu's pretty fun. Stu parties. Uh, let's see, we've got Depress Grove. I'd like to know what you guys think of Asura's Wrath. Oh my goodness. Asura's Wrath is... I haven't played it's it. It's hilarious. It is so weird. It is like an anime that you sort of control, kind of. It's uh, not, it doesn't look like the type of game that I'd be into at personally. At any point but... in the game, I think it strikes me as totally weird, at any point in the game, it's, it's mostly cutscenes. It's like, in, you know, if you know that going into it, like it's it's mm -hmm. pretty cool, uh, but you can you can control the uh, the ang ang angle of the camera, like mm -hmm. you can just wiggle it around. So if some guy's just like shouting at you about you killed your family and then they're screaming an explosion, you can just wiggle it back and forth the whole time. It's just like the weirdest thing that they were like, yeah, here's some, let's give them control of the game, hmm. but not the game itself, just the camera angle a little bit, just some wiggle room. But you can control the camera in most games. Yeah, but this is just just like side to side, really. Just up and down. You can zoom in a tiny That's bit, weird. I think. It's funny. Hmm. But yeah, the game, I thought the art style was almost really cool. It has kind of a hand-drawn look. Um, yeah, it's just fucking weird. Somebody asked so weird. Um, in the chat earlier if you had played Journey. I haven't played that yet. I'm going to play you that this weekend. I haven't played it. I played it. Have you guys seen the review that I did? I went on um, New Challenger yesterday with Anthony, and we reviewed Journey. It's so good. Oh my god, it's shut so up, good. Shut up, shut up, shut up, spoilers! I'm not spoiling anything, but seriously, you have to play it if you own a PS3. Yeah, it's I'm really stoked amazing. about that. Um, I played Dragon's Dogma yesterday. How was that? I went and played that. I'm fucking stoked on this game! I really want this game! Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, it's everyone's sort of like, yeah, whatever, looks like a dragon game or whatever. Uh, and the the mechanic of climbing on enemies. I think that's what you enemies. said the first time you no, saw No, I didn't. I was, like, I was like, cool, dragons. Great, another dragon game. Um, but no, it's really it's really cool. And it, the whole time I was like, ha ha, kingdoms of Amalur. And it's this game actually tries some new shit. You can climb enemies, which is like, you know, Shadow of the Colossus mechanic, except mm -hmm. this time it's in a hard RPG. Uh, the other thing is the, the the NPC party system is crazy. It doesn't make it's it's like it makes sense. It's just totally out there. Um, 
Basically, you have you create your own character, and then you create your main pawn, who's like your your all the time NPC who's with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you create two characters, which is you know a good level of customization. So it's like you're playing, you know, two two characters. So you except, get a sidekick. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you have two other other pawns that can be switched in and out whenever in the game because there are just pawns running around everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you can hire high level ones to help come help you, or you can just get ones who are lower level than you to come help you for free. But the online component, if like if you've got a friend like in real life who also has the game. You can have them give you their main pawn, like the, the pawn that they made themselves will come into your game, no matter what level they are, and they'll they'll help you. So, like, let's say I get the game, I play it for like 30 hours. You get the game, and you're totally new at it. I'm like, here, um, take my pawn, Lydia, my and she will go with you. And if by some chance you go to a place that I haven't been to yet, uh, she will come back, or my pawn, whoever, what, whatever, will come back with information picked up from your game. So like locations of dungeons, uh, enemy weak spots, That's kind of uh, cool. new quests to unlock, like stuff like it's. That's it's like cool. playing. Um, it's like AI co-op, but not that dumb. It's like AI by or co-op by proxy. You hmm. know, it's interesting. Yeah, loaning somebody your uh, your save file, but that's a. Uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some gameplay up on our Rev3 Games channel. That's YouTube.com/slash/Rev3Games. You should be subscribed already, guys. Um, and we're gonna have an interview right here on, on Detroit. That'll that'll be going up sometime uh, soon or early next week. Um, any any questions? Anything Let's see. Cool? Uh, any fun sassy business? Absorb Create asks, is it worth buying a current gen console right now? Somebody asked actually asked me that on Twitter the other day. They were like, hey, should I get an Xbox or a PS3? And I was like. Knowing that there's going to be a new Xbox like within the next year or a year and a half, it's. Go for but it. the thing is, they're so cheap they're, now. They're, they're pretty you can cheap. Get a four gigger for Dude, like less than two hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm all about the PS3 right now because I held off on buying one for the longest time. I had an Xbox for like mm. a year before I got I got a PS3 for Christmas, and I love it. Like I love it because it's totally it's it's new to me. And of course, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a really clean design. And I still, I mean, I still have Xbox. Xbox yeah. has Connect, which is freaking awesome. And I don't care what you guys say, it's the best. I Beats like the, the shit out of the PlayStation Move, uh, but. PS3 will be around for a little bit longer. It's a Blu ray player. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since I got also one of those that. big, stupid TVs, I'm like, this looks too standard definition. I need a bigger movie. And then I get Space Jam on Blu ray. All right. Uh, so all let's, right. Uh, That's let's bring questions. it to an end. Um, you guys, we're having a contest. We're having a contest right now. We've got uh, we've got three copies of each of these games. We've got uh, Dynasty Warriors Next and uh, Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus. These are for the PlayStation Vita. And all you have to do is dress up like ninjas or Dynasty Warriors. So far, we've got a lot of ninja costume s sent in to us, and I have not seen any Mongol warlords, any nasty warriors. I told you it'd be hard to dress up Are you up the like Nasty one. Warriors? It's not. You put on a bathrobe and a stupid hat. That I looks mean, nothing look like a samurai. Look at him. He looks like a stupid bathrobe hat. Um, but yeah, so it, bonus points if you're holding up a Vita. So you send your pictures to cookies at destructoid.com by this Sunday at 11.59 p.m., and we will announce the winners on Monday's show. Apologies to our international viewers. I know you you guys are watching from all over the world, and we love you, but this contest is US only. I do not make the rules, and I feel like an ass every time we do yeah, that. Yeah, we're gonna have codes real soon. We're gonna have codes, Probably we're getting codes, Friday. we're gonna have codes. We got it's you, we got you then. Netflix in the UK and Ireland. Like, we hustled, man. Mm -hmm. We went down there, we're like, these British people wanna see our classy American television programming. Yeah. We've been watching their BBC shows for too long, it's not fair. Hey, I like BBC. I'm not making fun of the BBC, I'm okay. making fun of our shitty TV in America. Terrible. Right, so wrapping this thing up, if you guys are wondering why we neglected to discuss Mass Effect 3 today, it's because we intentionally neglected to discuss Mass Effect 3 that, today. That dead horse has we been beaten thoroughly. We made a video about it, actually, instead, and you can go watch that on Red 3 Games' YouTube channel. The address for that is youtube.com slash Red 3 Games, and it's got lots of videos that you've probably never even seen before, like some with Max, and some with me, and some with both of us. Some of us with, like, us with other dudes, it, it gets crazy in there, you guys. There's something for everybody. So watch, subscribe, and then go follow us on Twitter, because that's where yeah. we hang out. I'm He's Max, Max Scoville, Scoville. And you're Tara Longest. I'm Tara Longest, and the show is Detoid Show, of course. Uh, we've got our hotline on there. Haven't received any calls in a while. Maybe somebody should get on that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's it for our live show. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. It's, it's happy birthday to us, and we have to pick up this confetti now. Yeah. Ew. We've got to mop the floor. Have a good weekend, guys. We'll don't, see you back here on Monday. Don't be mean to nobody. Stu, get out of here. Get out of here, Stu.